the opportunity to, to put this conference on arose really because of social media. Three years ago, Lee, AC, and I uh, were on a panel together. And after hearing him speak, I knew that social media was going to be a very important part of our um, communications stream in the future. So how did we keep in touch? On Twitter. First, I wanted to uh, direct you to or, or highlight a blog post that I did on our Mayo Clinic Center for Social Media site just as we were preparing this morning. Uh, this is the, the post about today's uh, event. About three or four years ago, social media came along. And that's when I realized we have another fundamental shift in how people are spending time and accessing information. Me trying to find a power cord at a, a social media conference. That's on my Facebook page. It's been up two hours, already eight likes. So that is the kind of the power of social media. People are paying attention out there. It's about credibility. There's a study that was done um, that showed that hospitals participating in social media show more credibility to the community. They expect us to be there. We work in a very traditional setting, as, as many of you do. And so we wanted to broach this uh, slowly and surely and make sure that we did things the right way for our physicians and also for our colleagues. We got on Twitter just over four years ago. Our flagship blog was launched in January of 2009 uh, called Sharing Mayo Clinic, a uh, chance to share patient stories and connect.mayoclinic.org is sort of our version of Facebook. We launched that almost a year ago now. It was in July of last year. It's got about 18, 19,000 uh, people part of it a way for people to talk about uh, health-related issues um, not using their Facebook account. Video is the number one influencing element, I believe, in social media right now. And so what we've done is we've actually created playlists within YouTube for our Meridian Health channel, and that's really been a focus for a lot of our traffic. You have to match what's happening in society, and you have to be relevant to what's going on. Now, this is Sri Koka. He's the chair of our dentistry practice. Sri made a video, and it, it's a brief video just introducing himself, introducing Dot. Um, Hi, my name is Dr. Sri Koka, and I'm Dr. a consultant of prosthodontics in the Department of Dental Specialties at Mayo Clinic. What he's done then, he's framed the visit. And that's a large part of my clinical practice when I see someone in clinic, it's framing a visit. I do that eight to ten times a day. And think about that, eight to ten encounters over a day. That's 30 minutes a day that he saved from his clinical practice. Even in social media, there's ROI, financial return on investment. So this is my friend Chris Bevelo at Interval Chris, and he says it really succinctly. Social media ROI reflects any other marketing related ROI. The net financial revenue to the organization from the effort after having accounted for the effort's cost. Financial money. Dough, bottom line, coin, or as I like to call it, ROI. MeridianMomTourage.com is a site that we developed back in May 2010, and it's a site specifically for moms and women, and its based focus is women's health. We talk about inviting in women, mom bloggers, to come in and really talk about everyday life, talk about topics that matter to them. When it comes to social media, our patients, our audience, our customers, they trust healthcare providers, they're influenced by our messages, they want us to respond, and they want us to support them afterwards in a social media space. Um, you also have engaged patients, you have data that supports why you can speak to them. And if you deliver top quality service and care to them, your job is gonna be so easy because they're gonna go talk about what you want and what you do. That's what social media is, right? They're I speak as a person who's been diagnosed four times with, can with cancer, and I live every day with the sequelae of that many diagnoses and that much treatment. I'm a frequent, really frequent user of healthcare. Our obligation as providers is to be partners with our patients and walk with them on their journey, online and offline. I have a little two-year-old daughter, and I needed a pediatrician. So instead of just looking who my health care um, provider allowed for pediatricians, that first looked up who in my area was involved in social media. I found a pediatrician that blogged, and then I went and saw and made sure that she was in my health care. Tell me, how likely is it, do you think, 
that we're going to make the heavy lift of engaging in our health care if our clinicians don't listen to us carefully and explain things so that we understand them. Patients are being honest and these doctors need to be just as honest. They need to look at themselves and they've got to think differently to relate to their patients better than that's what they're going to have to do. Patients come on the forum and they want to know why they were diagnosed with MS. They also want to know why their neurologist dismissed them, why they're left, you know, not knowing what's going on. A few weeks ago, this one uh, posted on our site and goes, I'm, I'm going to commit suicide. Automated system sees that, sends it over to a moderator, moderator checks it out and goes, I think this is real. Uh, we do the check-in, find out the person is out in, in Switzerland. So what's the process? We contact Interpol. Interpol contacts the Swiss police. They get somebody to her house. Somebody's at her house within two hours. And she's actually thinking of committing suicide. But she calls us up two days later and goes, you know, thanks for sending the police over. I'm actually not suicidal. It's a side effect of a new uh, medication I'm on. So you have to have the process to be able to deal with it very quickly. The physician-patient culture needs to evolve. And patients right now are used to, well, depending on what age group you're in, is receiving information from the doctor. But of course, as time changes, they're going to provide information to the doctor and, of course, share it among themselves. Um, and probably, as, as Eric Topol, I think, has eloquently stated, that the, the revolution will come from the patients and the physicians will follow. When they tell me, Mike, you know, social media is a fad, it's going away. What I tell them is, go to the computer, type your name, hit enter, what do you get? Okay. What a lot of physicians and providers are surprised about is that their first link is not when they were physician of the year of their town last year. Okay. It is a physician rating site like Health Grades. Engagement for healthcare providers is predicated upon identifying the operational need. It's not just a matter of getting doctors on Twitter. You've got to speak with them, identify what their needs are, and what tool you have to meet that need. Uh, my story is actually a little backward. My physician introduced me to social media. Full disclosure, it's Howard, so. Um, <laughs> but he introduced me to it 12 years ago when it wasn't called social media. It was this you know, new thing called an internet. We are here to treat patients. The root word of doctors, docere, is to teach. I am here to teach you, to educate you about your disease process, and to enter into a shared decision-making process with you. So mobile changes everything. That's me sitting in line at the bottom right. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that's the day the iPhone uh, uh, hit, the, hit, the, hit the world. So the age of medical apps is equal to the age of the really smartphone app world. And within a few years, this is now almost a year old, thousands, thousands of medical apps were on the App Store, on the iOS, and now, of course, a lot of them on the Android market. That's 9,000 and 6,000, and those numbers climb daily. I hope the message you could take away from this presentation is that anyone can make an app. All it takes is a great idea or identifying a need. Nurses are the largest providers of healthcare. We abbreviate so much in healthcare. Not knowing what an abbreviation means can be missing a critical piece of patient data. A big study done by Paula Castino actually in Brooklyn uh, looking at text message reminders for birth control. And she showed a 10% improvement of pill adherence at six months. And so when I first started working there, I realized that everybody was using text messaging and so I wanted to use it to educate my patients. Launched in January 2010 and these are the six month figures. We're all about the providers, the institution being able to deliver apps securely to their physicians but what we found out really fast as we went into the marketplace is physicians want to be able to deliver apps to their patients but more importantly patients are coming to their physicians with lots and lots of questions and we think physicians should be the ones prescribing apps. If you are not active and if you are not out there and if you are not where patients are looking for information and online, then your relevance going forward as a practicing physician is in question. This isn't just social media. This is healthcare social media. It's different. Let me show you how it goes. Social media are why. If you're not going to measure it, then why are you even doing it? It's easy if you try Just like your marketing You should be measuring everything You put your metrics in a chart Oh, that's the old word, sorry It's simple and it's a start the Social media ROI Press your CFO It's, all, it's the only way to 
go And that's the end End of the show